What's up guys and welcome to my very first video on my channel Adventures with Dennis. I am your host, your guide, your mentor, your friend, whatever you want to call me. Just don't call me late for dinner. My name is Dennis and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a guy who was the OG, the original Tiger King here in the Tampa Bay area. Now I'm not talking about Joe Exotic. And I'm not talking about Carol Baskin. Who I'm talking about is a guy named Gene Holloway. Now with all this Tiger King stuff, I came across a story a while back. And I thought, you know what? This will be a great first video for my channel. Now my channel is going to deal with haunted locations and unique and unusual roadside attractions and different stories. And since I'm an actor... I was going to do some acting stuff too and show you what it's like to be an actor here in the state of Florida. Also, I might take you to stunt school or pro wrestling school. I, I was a pro wrestler for six years, so we'll be able to do that. But today, we're going to talk about Gene Holloway, the original Tiger King, and he's got a wild story, so let's hit it. What's up guys and welcome back. I'm standing outside this building right here in Tampa Bay area. Believe it or not, this was Gene Holloway's restaurant called the Sea Wolf. Now, the Sea Wolf was named after Jack London book about an undersea voyage to the Bering Sea. Now, Gene had two different restaurants, one here in Tampa and one in Lakeland. Now, the one in Lakeland didn't last very long. It was shut down in 1980. Now this, this restaurant right here was his crown jewel. It was his baby. He had four different dining rooms inside here. Each all a different color. All different styles, different furniture, different silverware, different plates and everything. Inside this restaurant, there were two 1,000 gallon fish tanks. A Steinway piano. He had authentic Louis Comfort Tiffany painted glass in here, which sold for a lot of money whenever he shut this restaurant down. This restaurant was so elaborate that people wanted to come here all the time. This was the place to be. Sometimes there would be a two hour wait at this restaurant. They would have Clydesdales pulling a wagon, carrying people from the from the parking lot to the restaurant now if you look over there that parking lot across the street that's bush gardens bush gardens is right down the road some people will come from bush gardens over to this restaurant after leaving bush gardens now gene was a weird character he was one of those guys that loved eccentric stuff he loved off the wall kind of things he would buy things three tigers a jaguar a cougar and a leopard now around this restaurant he had gardens and he would bring his cats to the restaurant and let them loose in the garden so they can roam around and have fun and whatever. And the customers would, would have their dinner and they would watch the cats as they roam around the outside of the building. Now, one time, the manager told a story about one of the tiger's enclosures. There was a pigeon that got too close to a tiger. And needless to say, the pigeon was hunted and consumed in front of customers. So you can say that they got dinner and a show. <laughs> but that's one of the stories here at this restaurant. It was kind of interesting to hear that. He had peacocks and chickens running around the outside. I mean, if you look, this is the parking lot in the back here. 
It's pretty big. Sometimes he would have a carnival here. And he would bring his cats so people could see the cats and all that stuff. But the main attraction was Gene himself wrestling a bear. Yeah. You could say that Gene was not only the Tiger King, but he was also Grizzly Adams. Yeah. Interesting guy. I would love to meet him. No, I'm standing in the back because this is a value pawn store now. Uh, I don't want to interrupt the customers up front, but yeah, if you come around the side here, you can see the size of this building. It's big. I mean, it's huge. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Here. Look around the side of this building. This, this building is huge. It's a value pawn. Now, it used to be a, a Chinese restaurant before this, but the original building was the Sea Wolf. And like I said, you can see the outside here. He had walkways all around the outside of it. And this is the value pond now. I mean, look at the size of this building. This thing is huge. I want to go inside and see what's in there. <laughs> it's big. I've never seen a pawn shop this big before. But the interesting thing was Gene loved to entertain people. He was eccentric himself. He, he would wear long suede leather coats and a big cowboy hat with the feathers on the front and, and all that stuff. And cowboy boots. He looked like He looked like an extra from Urban Cowboy. A little bit about Gene. In 1937, he was born in Sulphur Springs. He was, his, his childhood home was in Ballast Point. Later on in life, they moved into a bus. I guess they lost the house and lost everything. So, um, yeah. And back in the 40s, if you can imagine, it's probably the depression and all that stuff. And people losing their jobs and stuff. But his father was a merchant marine in World War II. Now Gene married his first wife when he was 17, 18 years old and he joined the Navy. But while he was in the Navy, he was stationed in the South Pole. Now story is told, and Gene's told the story several times, while he was in the South Pole, he climbed Mount Erebus. I don't know if you know anything about the South Pole or Antarctica, but Mount Erebus is the second highest volcano in the South Pole. It's an active volcano. Now, there's news articles that show him in the South Pole. But I don't know if the story is true about um, Mount Erebus. He's told that story several times to several different people. And they'll, they'll collaborate the, the story and say, yeah, he's, he's told that story. But this guy claimed he climbed, he climbed Mount Erebus. But uh, when he came back to Tampa... He got divorced, got remarried, got divorced, remarried, got divorced. And all while doing this, he created a food brokerage company. Now, this company supplied food for different restaurants. Well, one of the restaurants that he helped co-found was Red Lobster. Now, by the time he was 36 years old... There were 200 Red Lobster locations. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Now, in the late 70s, he sold his food brokerage company to General Mills for millions of dollars. So he was a millionaire. He married, in the late 70s, he, he married Debbie Ponton, who was Miss Tampa back in the day. 
She's a beautiful woman. Matter of fact, I think there's a picture of them together with one of their cats, their, uh, their Florida Panther. But they got married in the late 70s. And he started his uh, restaurants, the Sea Wolf. This one here and the one on Lakeland. Now, like I said, the one in Lakeland didn't last very long. It wasn't as big. Matter of fact, I'll show you a clip of what it is today. It's a, it's a bank. It's Chase Bank. Now, whenever he had the food brokerage company, the very first Red Lobster was built in Lakeland, 1968. And I will show you a clip of that. Now, today, it's going to be a restaurant called The Oasis. I've known it over the past few years, well, quite a few years, that it's been several different things. It's been a couple of nightclubs, it's been a different restaurant, it's been a church, and now it's going to be another restaurant. And it's right back next to uh, Lake Parker. Now, Gene had a ranch in Tenota Sassa. And Tenota Sassa is kind of like a small community southeast of Tampa here. On his ranch, it was a 40-acre ranch, he had his cats. Uh, each cat had their own big enclosure with a pool, a swing pool, and a TV. I guess they like watching... Bill of Fortune. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I like the Nature Channel. I don't know. Anyway, now in 1980, believe it or not, Gene ran for president. Can you imagine that? This guy as president. I think it would have been cool. But. Yeah, Gene ran for president in 1980. He spent $50,000 of his own money. He only campaigned here in Florida. He didn't go out of state. He didn't get many votes, but he was in the headlines a lot. Mainly because of his cats. He used to do commercials with the cats. He would do commercials for the restaurant with the cats. He would do news segments with the cats. He would wrestle the cats. He would wrestle bears. I mean, this guy was a legitimate Tiger King, in my opinion. My opinion, he is the original. Yo, yo, G. Yo, G, Tiger King. Now, in April 1981, Debbie filed for divorce. Uh, the reason why she filed for divorce is back when he was campaigning for to be the president, uh, he... Gene was getting a little stressed out with everything and he met a couple of 18 year old girls here at the restaurant and he was going to take them to a drag show here in Tampa. Now his campaign manager, Tony Sapone, uh, didn't think that was appropriate so he basically hurried the girls out of the restaurant into his car to take them to their house and... Gene didn't like that. Gene got so pissed off that while they were leaving, he shot six bullets into Tony's car. No one got hurt. Police weren't called. They didn't follow a report. No, didn't, nobody pressed charges or anything like that. But the friendship of Tony and Gene was over. I mean, I can imagine. I mean, if you shoot at me six times no matter of fact if you shoot at me if you shoot at me one time trying to kill me you better not let me see you again because it's gonna be on like Donkey Kong anyway Gene and Tony were over April of 1981 Debbie filed for divorce the next night their ranch in the Sassa burned down. Now, they suspected arson, naturally, because of the events that was going on, but also of what was missing. 
There was a vanity plate on the back of one of his cars. It was in the garage when it burned down. That was missing. So they suspected Gene of arson. They investigated him and they acquitted him in federal court. So he didn't have any charges against him of arson. Now, later that year, he, he took out a $16 million dollar life insurance policy on himself and his beneficiary was his wife Debbie at the time. September 1981 Gene leased the Sea Wolf here in Tampa to then executive for Campbell Soup Bob Dorney. Two days later he went missing. He was yachting with his friends on his yacht, a 60-foot yacht, going down to Key West and apparently he slipped and fell off the boat. They couldn't find the body. They called the Coast Guard, couldn't find the body. So they presumed him dead. Now they watched his wife, Debbie, for a long time to see if she cashed in uh, the insurance policy. But she never did. Two months later in November, they caught Gene in Toronto, Canada under the name of James LaRue. Eyewitnesses said Gene stuck out like a sore thumb in Toronto. You can just imagine. Gene with his cowboy hat with the feathers on the front, a long suede full length coat with a fox fur collar, cowboy boots. You can just imagine he stuck out like a sore thumb. Now he met a girl up there named Susan Wall. Now Susan said that he was tipping $20 a drink and he was buying everybody drinks at the bar. Had a box of pot that he got from the limo driver and he invited her to the hotel and they went to the hotel and she didn't feel comfortable smoking this pot with him. So they took it and they hid the box behind the ice machine at the hotel. Needless to say, they were watching Gene. Not because of the drugs, no. They were watching Gene because of his name. The name he used, James LaRue, was a known criminal <laughs> in Canada. Here's a tip. If you're going to fake your death and assume another name, make sure that person is not a criminal or already dead or whatever. Make sure there's no discrepancies. Okay? Just, just, just a tip. Now, they're watching him because of his name. Busted him in the hotel. They found the pot behind the ice machine. They arrested him for uh, possession of hashish and using a fake alias. But they found out who it was and they were like, oh, you're that guy from Florida that faked your death. It's supposedly dead. Okay. So they extradited him back to Florida, stood trial, pled guilty for insurance fraud. They gave him five years, five years, five years for insurance fraud. And he only spent 40 months, just over three years. And when he got out, he decided he wanted to get back in the restaurant business, so he opened up four more Sea Wolf restaurants. They didn't do as good as the original, so he shut those down quickly. It didn't last very long. I think it was between 1985 to 90. Now this restaurant, believe it or not, okay, back in 1979, when this restaurant was hot, right? This restaurant in one year made $5 million. In today's standard, that's not very much. But in 1979, that made them, this restaurant, Sea Wolf, the eighth highest grossing restaurant in the world. Not just in the United States, the world. 
the entire world at that time. That's incredible to be the eighth in the top ten. This was a hot spot back in the day. Now, when, when Gene went to jail, Q105 did a look-like contest for Gene at a local bar. I don't know exactly what bar it was. And there was so many people there that looked like Gene. I would love to hang out with Gene. After all the restaurants failed between 1985 to 1990, he decided to get out of restaurant business and just try something different. So he moved to Odessa, Florida, which is just north of here. And while he was up there in Newport Ritchie, he, he opened up a treasure hunting business, which is kind of ironic because he was all about treasure all the time. He was treasure himself. I mean, the man collected things that boggled Ripley's, believe it or not, man. I mean, he had a stuffed moose in his house in, in Lakeland. Moved to Odessa, opened up a treasure hunting business on the coast of Florida in the Gulf in Newport Ritchie. So they would run people up and down the coast and look for lost treasure because there's a lot of treasure out there on the coast. You know, Spanish, Spanish coins and and things like that. Now, today, Gene would be 83 years old, and I think he's still alive. Somewhere I read, I think he's still alive. I think he moved back to Tenota Sasa. He lives somewhere over there. I don't know if he has a ranch or if he just has just a regular house or whatever. But the man was an unbelievable story. I don't know why there isn't a movie about him. I just don't know why. There is so much intrigue and craziness. I mean, the Tiger King, the, the Joe Exotic Tiger King, his story is sinister. You know, all about murder and, and all kinds of crazy crap. But Gene's story is more colorful. It's more noteworthy. I would love to meet the guy. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you share it, you comment. Make sure you subscribe. If you do subscribe, just tickle that little bell down there. You know, that little bell, right? there just tickle it just tickle it and i'll let you know whenever i upload a new video now my channel is about adventure haunted location roadside attraction stories like gene holloway's if you have a story that you want me to investigate or a location you want me to investigate just leave me a comment let me know where it's at and i'll see what i can do right now i'm just doing stuff in florida but that's all i can afford at the moment i do want to adventure out and go to different states and different places and and who knows maybe i can collab with some high-ranking YouTubers. You never know. But remember to stay adventurous. Peace.